Right. Okay, so I am now getting into the swing of 2024, finally. Um, so I'm, I'm sort of balancing my time between uh, refactoring, um, improving old features, and working on new features, and um, and bug fixing occasionally, obviously. Um, so the refactoring stuff, uh, refactoring is like an ongoing thing that will never end. Um, just as the code base gets bigger and bigger, things start bloating out and uh, you find things that you need to refactor. So refactoring is always going to have to happen. But I have basically done all of the major refactoring that I needed to do. That's the main thing that I was working on last year. It was just refactoring. That's why last year was such a depressing year for me. Um, uh, and um, so I've resolved like the major technical debt that I built up over the first like three years of working on Blockhead when I didn't really know what, to, what I was doing and I didn't know what Blockhead was yet and so I was just sort of following my nose and so I was building up all these very complicated systems um, and uh, I've heard people say in the past like um, you, you need to write something three times for it to be good. You write something once where you don't you don't even know don't really know what you're doing, um, where you're just like doing experiments and stuff, and then once you figure out what you're doing, you write it a second time, and then during the second time writing it, you learn all the mistakes of like <laughs> what what the right way to actually write it is, and then you write it a third time, and that's when you get a really good implementation. <clears throat> uh, so my experience is like 10 times is a more realistic number for me maybe it's because I'm such a terrible terrible programmer but um, uh, but a lot of uh, what I was refactoring last year was like the first and second implementations of all of these complicated systems uh, and now I have a pretty robust I think architecture for the entire thing uh, so the refactoring that I'm going to be doing from now on is going to be like um, not as major anyway so I'm balancing my time between that and new new features that I'm going to be adding hopefully this year I will be able to start working on some new and exciting things um, <clears throat> yeah sometimes people uh, people <laughs> ask me sometimes like am I worried about like big um big audio companies with like more money and resources like looking at my ideas and stealing them um and one of the reasons i'm not worried about that is because i feel this is i don't know maybe this is slightly uh slightly cocky or big-headed to say but i feel like for every one idea that someone could steal i have like five more secret ideas in my head that I haven't told anyone about um, but yeah there's one idea that I've just been thinking about so much over the past few weeks um, that I, I really would like to um, to start working on this year I think uh, properly uh, it's a really crazy idea um, uh yeah, I haven't told anyone about it. It's just it only exists in my head at the moment. But I've I've basically been working on that for the last three days. But the the main thing that I've been doing on it is uh, thinking. Like thinking is a lot of work sometimes. Um, hist like historically, with in de blockheads development, I um, when coming up with these ideas for like how these systems are supposed to work uh, early on um, yeah a large part of the process is just thinking um, <clears throat> I don't really write many notes or anything or draw diagrams for the most part I just think and then keep it in my head um, yeah so I've, I wrote a little bit of code this morning <laughs> as a start but mainly I've just been thinking about how it's all going to work 
uh, yeah, it's going to be really weird. Um, it's going. I think it's going to be a lot weirder than anything else uh, in Blockhead so far. Um, anyway, so I'm not going to be working on that now because I'm sick of just like working on theoretical things and just thinking. Um, I'd like to write some actual code and actually make some progress on something. So the other thing that I'm balancing my time between is uh, improving existing features. And so the last few weeks, actually, I've been working towards the idea of um, adding the ability to uh, save blocks to the file system and load them. Um, not exporting them as WAV files or anything like that, but actually saving um, saving the actual blocks. So, for example, if you have something like a sampler block here with some modulation data inside of it, um, you'd have to be, oh, this is broken, look. I, what's going on there? I've broken, broken something. <laughs> Interesting. Let's make a note. Investigate plugin selector disappearing at certain zoom levels? Question mark. Um, but anyway, you'd have to be able to right click and say save to file. So I've already got the context menu here, the context menu item. And then there'd be, there's, there's this like temporary dialogue that I created. It doesn't do anything yet. If you press OK, it'll just say didn't implement the list. Um, um, so there's a lot of complications to, to figure out. Uh, one of the weird things is, um, the blockhead plugins are very, very small. They're basically like the size of samples. And for something like a sampler block, you have the option, obviously, of storing the sample data with the file so that it will be there when you open the block, which is probably what you want to do. But you could also store the plugins, the sampler plugin as well with the block, um, which will probably... I possibly won't allow that um straight away um i might leave that until i fully understand the security implications of storing a dll and then allowing people to <clears throat> share them over the internet sort of packaged like hidden away in these block files uh, obviously there's no more of a security implication than sharing vst plugins around the internet it's, it's just it's still like it's code that you're putting on your computer and allowing to run. Um, but I'm not a security expert, so I'd, I, I, there might be some unanswered uh, questions there that I don't know about yet. Anyway, so this dialogue, dialogue this temporary dialogue is shit. And also, <clears throat> this the existing dialogue for exporting a block is also shit. And the dialogue for exporting a sample that exists in the project is shit. This is a shit dialogue. And for rendering the current workspace, this is a shit dialogue. Um, <clears throat> also, the, there's a little bit of potential confusion between the difference between saving a block and exporting a block. Um, and so probably what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the, the, this idea of saving a block. And also I say render, rendering a workspace. Uh, so that's more confu confu confusion. I'm just going to use the word export for everything. So you can export a block either as a WAV or as a block file, like non-destructive save of a block file. <clears throat> or you can export a sample or you can export a workspace, which is like rendering the song. Um, and the only thing I'm going to use the word save for is like saving the project. So everything else is going to use the word export. And I'm going to create one big dialogue with like a tab interface, similar to how I've got for the settings. I have this tab interface up here. Um, 
and it's going to be one big, big dialogue with a tab, tab of the face for which, for what, what kind of an export you want to do. Um, and I'm going to allow like batch exporting of all of the samples in the project or whatever, or, or all of uh, multiple blocks or multiple samples, which is something I think people do quite a lot because people use people typically use Blockhead as like a um, a sound effect creator. I think is a pretty popular use for right now. Um, and so they just want to like export all of the samples that they've created in one go and it's pain in the ass to do that at the moment um, oh yeah the other thing right um, the, the file format of these blocks um, there's no reason why I can't simply use the same file format as the project file format so these dot blockhead blkhd files um, I could just use that and if you try to open a project as if it's a block then it will open it as a macro um, or if there's multiple workspaces in, in the project then it will say which which of these workspaces do you want to open as a macro and then it will generate the macro from a project and then you can drop it into your workspace um, and then uh, vice versa if you um, if you try to open a block as, a, as if it's a project then um, but if you open, try to open a, a block a blocked file and it's not a project it's actually just a block then it will open some kind of dialogue saying what what is it in this blocked file that you actually want to import into the into the project um and if it's an actual project then it will just open it as a project uh i think that would be cool so there's a few dialogues that i need to create and so i think all i'm gonna do now ah, it happened again this happens like once in every 100 times it's not hard to track this down but I just haven't bothered to, uh, I have to like um, switch over to my debug build of Godot and put a break point <laughs> at the point where it prints this error out and then it will, I'll be able to figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah, this happens about, yeah, one in every hundred times I exit blockhead. Uh, anyway, so what I'm going to do is just start working on a dialog box this export dialog box and I'm going to try and copy the, the tab interface that I did for the settings how does that work exactly it's just like a manual tab interface that I did here um, I don't have any like generic control that I can reuse to do that I guess I'll just sort of copy what I did here. It's like... It's not like a special... Oh, right, right, okay. I have these special style boxes for the buttons. <clears throat> yes, okay. Nav... So I'm going to reuse these star button buttons, so I guess I should rename them to be just like nav button hover. That didn't work. Godot is like really bad at renaming things. Nav button hover. Like it shouldn't have created a second one, it should have just renamed it. So what did it do there? Let's check. Settings nav button hover. Okay. So it did rename it, but it didn't delete the original file, it looks like. Or am I just in the wrong... I'm in the wrong folder. Am I? No? So 
Jetzt muss ich mal kurz um. Hallo? Das ist weird. Oh, I didn't put an S. Right. It's, it's just a, a really buggy feature, the file renaming, because it has to go like update of all of the references to the file, and that's where it often fails. But did it work? Yes. Seems like it. So I'll do that and then do this. Everything fine? Hope so. Okay. <coughs> so yeah, I'll tr I'll just um I'll copy what I did here. Pages. Right, here we go. Oops. Dialog. Window dialog. Export dialog. Entered field. Okay. Oops, that was wrong. Oh, I just imported all of it. Uh, I see. Get rid of this. Get rid of all these. Right, so what do we want here? We want... So what's going to happen when you like right-click a block and say export block or whatever? It's going to open this dialog and then automatically go to the correct tab for the thing that you want to do. Um, TR export audio. I want, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what I'm going to do. Export audio and TR export. Uh, uh, naming things is what hard. Um, <clears throat> I guess just export block because that's the only kind of non audio thing that I want to export. So 
so the export audio tab is going to it's going to encompass I'll show you how it's going to work I'll show you how it's going to work it's going to what we're going to do is um, it's going to be something like You know, when I have a tree, and a tree, you've probably seen one of the. I don't know what this this kind of interface is called, but um, ah, I can't do it like that, can I? Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah, it would be a thing like this. Uh, I'll put some kind of... Do I have an arrow? I do have an arrow. Oh, I need two, don't I? I want... Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Center, yep. So this is going to be tr a tree of all of the exportable audio in the project. So it's going to be all of the samples, all of the blocks, and all of the workspaces. And I'll organize it into a tree. Um, so you can add the things that you want to export and it will you can be, do all of them uh, as a batch process uh yes okay so this is uh, <clears throat> export audio page Is this margin container okay? Twenty. Is that too much? <clears throat> I 
So I want all of this stuff from the old export dialog as well. What's this? Export block dialog, for example, common export options, this thing. Yeah, I'm going to bring all of this into this new page. And I might just recreate this stuff. Um, it's just a browse dialog, yeah. What's this? Format, oh yeah. Yes, okay. Okay, so the reason I had this common export options thing is I was reusing it in several different dialogues. Uh, but now I don't need to do that because I'm only going to have one dialogue for all different different audio exports. Yes, and the name, you could specify a name before. Which I guess I will not include that here. Uh, that can be something I can add later. There's a lot of... Um, that's just uh, opening a can of worms. So let's keep it simple. And so you can't specify a name. It's just going to use... If the block already has a name, it will use that one. Dot .wav or whatever format. Um, and it resolved duplicates by doing the classic uh, brackets two brackets three at the end of the file name or whatever. Uh, and if it doesn't have a name, it will use the auto generated name because all every block in a project already has an auto generated name. Uh, okay, and so I'm going to have the destination and the browse button, the format selector, bit depth, sample rate, and then this checkbox here is this this uh, this thing. The pop out pop thing. <clears throat> yes, okay, not a problem. Not a problem. Oh, I don't need to display waveforms, I was just doing that before. for a bit of uh, eye candy, really. There's no need to do that. Um, oh, yeah, that's the other thing, right. Ah. I want, I want the, well, I want you to be able to, um, If you have some blocks in your project, for example, uh, you can preview them like this. So I'm going to reuse this new uh, list control that I created instead of using the tree. Instead of using a Godot tree, I'm going to reuse this. Um, yeah, one of the things I was working on for the past couple of weeks was uh, 
refactoring these list controls. So it's the same um, the same list control of my own creation being used for the file system and for the sample list here and for the block list. Um, I have quite a nice multi-purpose uh, list control thing now and it can do things like you can have like tree based content um, and you can like drag this into a folder for example um, yeah so that's the way I'm going to do it okay So instead of trees, I'm going to have two of these little more on lists, more on list view. Two of these. And so I'll, I'll allow the user to, again, um, preview the blocks that are being exported in either list I suppose because I can just re reuse the, the uh, controls for the most part because um, this is basically going to be a sort of a version of the block browser but it's also going to include workspace exportable workspaces What do I name these? <clears throat> I was thinking input and output, but it's not an input and output, is it? Uh, project browser and Project browser and what? Export list. Yep. Okay. So I'm just thinking about how I want to lay this out. <clears throat> I can't decide how I want to do it. Let's just keep, let's, let's try things. Uh, line edit.
I'm going to call that output folder instead. To your, is it called browse? Browse. Browse button. <coughs> like this. On this thing for my option button, which apparently I'm populating in code. What's this? Oh, this was written in GDScript. I remember. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad to be rid of this. This is an indication of how old this control is the fact that it's written in GDScript. So I don't write anything in GDScript anymore. I'm glad I'm rewriting this. Okay. Label. Format. Label. It's going to be like what are my output formats? I think it's a WAV or WAV pack. Those are the ones I support at the moment. <coughs> okay, bit depth sample rate, this thing.
Yeah, I guess I shouldn't do this because I need to populate it in code. Okay, this thing, include fade out period, and then this thing. Okay, I'm not gonna quite gonna know how this is gonna look until I see it. Uh, oh yeah, and then I want to add this button here as well. Maybe that doesn't look good. Is there a better way? I don't like all this wasted space. <clears throat> Just trying to think if there's a better way of... Uh... I don't know, I'm not... I'm not a UI designer, I don't know anything. Uh, right, I want to see what this looks like. So how do I do that? Just want to pop it up at the beginning. Let's write some hacky code to pop it up. Uh, here. Get node dialogs export dialog. Um, cast to window dialog. Pop up centered. I think that should work. Ah, right, yeah, yeah. That is not going to work because I'm using these complicated controls. Um, hmm. I 
Can I just do this? Or is there just going to be more, more problems? Okay. Right, so that's how it looks. Oh, I want it to be resizable. Oh, I need to sort out the... So how does that work on the settings dialog? Where is it? Yeah. I have a, this thing. Um, export dialog. So merge from scene. Oh, uh, this thing. Wait, I want this to be resizable. Okay. This should be on the right. Yeah, exports. Export dot dot dot. Pop exports. Guess I just want. Be on the right. How do I put that on the right? I think I can go shrink end. No. I wonder why shrink end doesn't work. I guess because it's in an HBox container. Okay, whatever. the classic trick of us doing that. Okay. So that's how it's going to look, is it? <clears throat> Again, don't really like the wasted space. Because I don't like the fact that the buttons are different heights. Why is that?
I don't know. It's a bit weird. Nineteen point two. Why? Twenty four one nineteen point two. It's weird. this button be underneath mm, I don't think so so export audio export look. an export block is going to look similar but it's just going to have a list of blocks and it won't have the audio export options in fact it will look like the one that I already made this thing no not that one save this one <clears throat> this is still a source of potential confusion though. If somebody wants to export a block as a WAV, for example, they might think, I want to export the block, so I want to go to the export block page, but actually they want the export audio page. So maybe um, instead of export block, I should say export object or something like that for when you want to save a block as a fi to a file. Export object. Maybe. Think about that. Why does it keep going up to the top left, I wonder? Pop up centered, I'm saying. 
Whoops. That's it. Possibly because I'm doing this in ready and it doesn't know where the center is yet. <coughs> Let's add it to the uh all right, let's sort out the this actually uh okay. One of these days I'm gonna complete one of these sentences that I've been starting. Controls dialogues. So all of these are gonna be deleted. This direct this export directory is going to be deleted. Because now I just have export dialog. So these are going to be deleted later, not yet. Export Dialog. CMIC is going to use this to generate a GDNS file. Uh, if you know what that means, you know, and if you don't, doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I lost track of my thoughts. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Go in here, dialogues. Okay. Whoa, I already have a thing called export dialogue. That's not good. What is this? Export dialogue. Is this a base class or something? Yes, it is. All right, uh, so I'm going to call it export dialog two. This is eventually going to be deleted, whatever this is. This is my old export uh, code. And then it's going to be replaced by this thing. And uh, so when, when this is deleted, I'll take the two off of this. So, this thing. Uh,
Oh yeah, it should be called export dialog two. Okay. Ah, uh, that's no good though. I need to... I now need to call this export dialog to... What kind of mess we had here? That's not that bad. Export page audio or objects. Is it object or objects? Should be objects. Wait, how did I do it? Yeah. More dynamically. Fuck you, Visual Studio. Don't do that, please. How did I do this here? Something like this.
Is that right? Is that what you did before? Looks like it. Okay, and then I did some magic here. Like this. Calculate min size. I don't think I need to do this, do I? <coughs> Show page listing. Don't care about that. Okie dokie, that should make the tab interface work. So instead of opening this dialog, open this one instead. Open, um, but I want to, I want to open it and then also switch to the correct page. So. So look, um, export object block. So open, no, pop-up. What kind of pop-up do I use on this? Pop-up centered. I feel like I want to do pop-up centered ratio. Um, and then show page. Yes. You read my mind, thank you. Uh, yeah, okay.
Let's just see how that looks. We'll see how it feels. So where does it feel? Did find this, it didn't find uh Vbox navigation button audio. Vbox navigation button audio. Uh this is the wrong Oh wait. What is even happening here? This is clearly wrong. Uh, first of all, I'm missing. I don't know why I need this. Why do I even need that? Why did I use tree navigation? I don't think that's used anywhere, is it? Oh, it is. I see, I see. I don't think I need it in the export dialog. Okay. I'll leave it there for now. Uh, button audio this thing. So this is a control. Controls and buttons. Vbox navigation. Oh yeah, yeah, this will be wrong. So it's just pages without all this shit. And now, pages export objects page, that's export objects page. Wait, did I save? I didn't save. Whoopsie. Okay. All right. So now, if I create a blog and say save to file, it should open and automatically go to the objects page. Yes, it does. And this interface now works. So the export objects page will have. <clears throat> Something similar to this. Okay, let's let's build it now. Um, And let's sort of copy this one a bit. Brilliant, well done, good day. Very good. That's really cool. Okay, duplicate. Um, where is it? You can like un unseen a thing. How do you do it? Make local, is that it? Ah, oh, yeah, okay, export. Objects page. Control box. This one. All right. Mm-mm. <clears throat> 
<clears throat> project object browser again I'm struggling to um, struggling with the naming of things uh, so export export options this is fine this will be the same This stuff will be different. Save to f save block to file dialog. Uh, storage options. Merge from scene. This thing. I can't remember what this label is. Does it display? Storage info. I don't I don't do anything with it at the moment. I think it was the point was to to save I don't know, what's the point of that label? I created this label here to to dynamically display some kind of information about the block that was being saved hmm. can't remember what I was going to do or oh, whatever, it'll come back to me when it comes to actually implementing this So that's how it's going to look. So the way what it's going to do is it's going to automatically open this tab, which is done, and it's going to automatically. So again, I'm going to have a list of all of the blocks in the project on the left, but it's going to automatically select the. Um, you crashed because I haven't set up the lists properly yet. Um, It'll automatically select this block that I clicked on and add it to this list. But then you can you can do further edits if you want before actually exporting. And then it will export as a blk blkhd file. Uh, yeah, this is the. So I'm probably going to disable this button actually uh, for reasons I explained earlier. Hmm. Yep. 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 Okay. <clears throat> so yeah, sometimes it's handy just creating the interface for a thing, just to sort of feel it out. And imagine how it, things are going to be. I hate all this wasted space. 
kind of looks weird as well. Can I improve the way that looks at least? Where am I? Uh, here. If I go... Hello? Why doesn't that work? What am I doing wrong here? Oh. Right, because I set this to shrink sensor. That look better? Not really. Just pissing around right now. I always end up doing stuff like this at the end of the day. Just pissing around. Maybe like that. I have to replicate it over here now. Min size a thousand, maybe. Well, 
Radio Mark. Gut. Oh, wir haben andere Ding. Ja, 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 ja. Okay, okay. Hmm. I know I'm not doing much now, I'm just sort of uh thinking <laughs> uh, which is not great um, not great footage I guess so I guess I'll stop recording